It's been 19 years since the terrorist attacks of September 11th. One America's Greta Wald takes a look back on that tragic day. On the morning of September 11, 2001, the Twin Towers stood high among the New York City skyline, but no one could predict the tragedy that would strike the buildings just hours later. 7.59 a.m., American Airlines Flight 11 departs Logan International Airport in Boston, headed for Los Angeles, California. 15 minutes later, United Airlines Flight 175 also leaves for L.A. from Boston. Then, American Airlines Flight 77 to L.A., takes off from Dulles International Airport at 8.20 a.m. And in New Jersey, United Flight 93 departs Newark International Airport at 8.41 a.m., traveling to San Francisco. Within just 42 minutes, four planes are in the air with terrorists on board. Flight attendants aboard United Flight 11 are the first to report hijackers, and at 8.46, the plane flies into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Uh, yeah, dispatcher. Yes. This is uh, off duty fire fighter Jermaine. I guess you got this already. But you got a plane crash into the World Trade Center. You aware of that? You have a plane that crashed into the World Trade Center in Manhattan? World Trade Center in Manhattan. 17 minutes later, an image that's burned into the minds of Americans unfolds on live TV as hijackers fly United Flight 175 into the South Tower. By 9.31 a.m., President George W. Bush declares the events an apparent terrorist attack. Then, just six minutes later, Flight 77 crashes into the western side of the Pentagon. And at 9.59, the South Tower collapses to the ground. For the first time ever, all flights over or headed to the continental United States are grounded by the FAA. United Flight 93 is now the only plane still in the air, and the pilots send a mayday call to air traffic control. After those aboard the flight hear about the attacks in New York and Washington, they attempt to take control away from hijackers. The Boeing 757 crashes into a field in Somerset County, Pennsylvania at 10.07 a.m. Two hours and 18 minutes after the first plane took off from Boston, hundreds of Americans have now been killed as part of a terror attack. But that death toll would continue to rise. The World Trade Center's North Tower collapses at 10.28 a.m. Americans across the country are in a panic as the president announces U.S. military forces worldwide are on high alert. George W. Bush returns to the White House at nearly 7 p.m., and declares a war on terrorism during a nationwide address later that night. America and our friends and allies join with all those who want peace and security in the world. And we stand together to win the war against terrorism. Today, the skyline of Manhattan looks different than it did on the morning of September 11, 2001. The One World Trade Center, also known as the Freedom Tower, opened on November 3, 2014, and stands on the northwest corner of the World Trade Center site. Memorials have also been built to honor the victims. The 9-11 memorial opened on September 11, 2011, in remembrance of the 2,977 lives lost in the tragic events of that day. Two reflecting pools now sit within the footprints left by the Twin Towers with the names of every victim inscribed in bronze panels around them. There's also a Pentagon Memorial in Arlington County, Virginia, and a Flight 93 National Memorial in Pennsylvania. September 11, 2001 was the single largest loss of life from a foreign attack on U.S. soil, a day that will never be forgotten by Americans. None of us will ever forget this day. Yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.